All right, section, or continuing onward, we're gonna go with uh, section 2.12, 2.12, I guess, whichever way you wanna say. And this one's gonna be pretty easy and simple too. We're gonna make sure to put our name and stuff at the top of our notes though. Make sure you can see me. Oh, you can't, good thing I checked. Uh, we're gonna go notes. And we're going to continue with our date, 926, 16. Awesome. So, 2.12 is going to be about the associative and commutative properties with multiplication. Now, this is very similar to what we did before. One of the keys to remember though is that multiplication is commutative with itself, but not with addition. And we'll kind of look at that later. But first, let's kind of refresh our memories on what the commutative property is and what the associative property is and kind of how they're different and how that looks with multiplication. So, write out the commutative for me. Commutative. And remember, that one is with the commute. That's where I'm going to get in my little car. Don't judge my car. And I'm going to drive somewhere, and then I'm going to drive back. And that's going to represent that I can multiply things and move them around the equation, as long as they're all being multiplied. So I can say, as my rule, A times B is equal to B times A, right? So I could write 4 times 2 is 8, which is also, ironically, not ironically, just equal to 2 times 4 equals still 8. And that kind of shows that it is equal. And again, our associative property of multiplication is pretty similar. But that's, remember, when you have uh, associates or friends and they get mad at each other and then they go hang out with other people. We're going to have our A times B times C, but in this case, our B and our C are going to be a quantity. And that is equal to A times B times C, with A and B as a quantity. So in this one, we have to multiply B times C first. In this one, we have to multiply A times B first, but it doesn't matter. In the end, it turns out the same. Let's look at a quick example of how that works. So if I was going to write 2 times 4 times 5, I could my first write it as this, and then I could write it again as 2 times 4 times 5 with uh, our first A and B associative. So this one I would have 4 times 5, which is 20, times 2, which is 40. This time I have 2 times 4, which is 8. 8 times 5 is, not surprisingly, 40. So our associative and commutative properties do hold true for multiplication and uh, we'll find out soon with division. Um, so we're gonna quickly take a look at this and then we're going to use it to simplify some uh, expressions. Okay, quickly a first example of this is we're gonna simplify the expression uh, for 0.21 times 8.8 .8 quantity times p. Now, using my associative, I can change where I multiply first, but this time it's going to be nice because it's already correctly associating what I need to simplify. So I'm just going to take 4.21 times 8.8. .8. And because I'm not doing my basic amount of um, multiplication, division, or addition, I can use my calculator. I don't have a... Oh, I do have one nearby. Yeah. Let's see if this guy's going to work. It does. So let's do 4.21. Oops. It doesn't look like it's going to work at all, actually. Let me see if I can put it up on my phone quick. If I have a calculator app. Sorry about that, guys. Okay, I do. And let's go with 4.21. 4.21 times... 
I probably just could have done it by hand in that amount of time, but that's okay. 37.048 times P. And I can remember always just write that as a 37.048 P for my total answer. Okay? That's how I can simplify. I want to take a look at uh, one more example quick before I send you off. This one's a little bit more uh, complicated, and it's what's useful in using these associative and commutative properties. Okay, we're going to take a look at an, at an example with some cooking. We're going to be looking at a recipe. And how this recipe works is that uh, first, well, if we write out our normal way of solving problems, sorry, I gotta scoop it up so I can read it easier. Oof, sorry. We're going to find out the number of cups that we need. The number of cups of tomatoes. Things that we know, every cup of tomatoes needs 0.5 onions. Every cup of onions needs four cloves of garlic. And again, we want to figure out how many cloves of garlic. Oops, so I don't want the number of tomatoes. I want the number of cloves of garlic in relation to the tomatoes, in relation to tomatoes. So for this one, I'm going to build an equation. So I can say that we have X cups of tomatoes. So, if I have X cups of tomatoes, I need to figure out how many cloves of garlic that turns into. So, for X cups of tomatoes, I can multiply that by 0.5 onions times 0.5 onions. Because every cup of tomatoes needs 0.5 onions. And this will tell me right now the total amount of onions that I need. So, if I use this 0.5X, that tells me my onions. And for using this, I can get to the amount of garlic that I need. Because for every cup of onions, which is 0.5x, I need four cloves of garlic. So I can say 0.5x times four gives me the total number of cloves of garlic I'm going to need. But this is poorly written and not simplified like a mathematician would like. So I need to use my commutative property and scoot this little 4 up to the beginning. So now I have 4 times 0.5 times x. And I can just do 4 times 0.5, which was 2. So 2x. So 2x means that for every cup of tomatoes, I will need 2 cloves of garlic. Which is good if I'm trying to buy and get what I need and get it all set up for my recipe. Um, okay, so most of the problems that you're going to be doing in this section are going to be related to this earlier problem we did with this simplifying. There's going to be things to multiply, and they're going to be mixed all around, and you have to move them back together to where they're supposed to go. Always start out by writing the problem, and make sure that you show me um, the answer and how you got to it. Make sense? That's it. It's about time for class.